Okay, how's it going? So I'm back with um, part two of workarounds for uh, JJOS and the MPC 2500. Okay, so basically what I'm going to talk about this time is a workaround for levels. We got some level discrepancy and I, I emailed um, as a bug report to the JJ people and they got back to me with, they said there was no way to fix it, but there is a workaround. The level discrepancy is the levels where you set this thing up is in the other uh, on the global tab and right now it's at minus 12 and your choices are 0 minus uh, 6 minus 12 minus 18 24 30 36 okay it gets pretty low okay, you never want to be that low I don't think um, so the two that are applicable here are 0 and minus 12. So when I did the last video, as you can see on it, I was at 0 dB. Okay, that's the loudest this thing is going to output for the master level. Now to record on an audio track something that's already programmed in your machine, um, as I was saying, so you don't use up those 32 voices, you want it on 0. Otherwise the level is going to be too low. So what I forgot to mention in that video is you want it at 0 dB to do the um, audio track bounces from the master out. Okay, And then to do what I'm about to show you, you definitely want it at minus 12, otherwise it'll be way too loud and it'll be distorted. And so what I'm, what I'm getting into now is called the looping recorder. Okay, And that's, um, that's uh, mode pad 11. It's not marked. Um, so JJ went ahead and, and used the pads, the extra spaces. And this thing is cool because it is a looping recorder, but it also will record live takes. It, it records audio only, and it's, it records live takes um, from, from your analog input, so you can plug a guitar or, or turntable or whatever audio source you want into the back, and then you can... Uh, just do a live take, you know, for four, eight, sixteen bars, um, or you can have it loop, and then you can do overdubs on the fly, which is kind of cool. So you're, you've got the analog input and you have the digital input, and that's pretty much it. You got two inputs on this one. You also don't have stereo. You have mono. You have three types of mono: mono left, mono right, and mono left and right, which is combines the two channels into one track. So it only goes analog or digital inputs, and it only goes mono, and it only goes for one minute, meaning that if we go to here and we say record bars, okay, so it's set to off, and when you set it to off, it only records for one minute, and then it just stops. So it has a one minute maximum record time, no matter what your memory is. And so that's a limitation of it. Or you can set it to one bar, two, three, four, all the way up to 16, I believe. Let's see. Yeah. So it goes up to 16 bars. And it'll either, via the right above it there, it'll either go into, after record, after the 16 bars, it'll go into dub, to dub mode. So it'll keep going, but it'll start overdubbing on top of what you recorded. So if you plug a guitar in, you can just play on top of the line that you did. And it becomes kind of a little looper pedal simulation thing and it works pretty good also if you're not in the dub mode and you record let's say your eight track or your eight uh, bars of, of something and then it it drops out of uh, record and goes into play and then here, I'll show you when you do this it's waiting for a pad so what's also cool is you can record your pads you can record a live performance on the pads whatever is uh, you're triggering or an input signal so if I just hit a pad it goes into recording mode and then after the two bars it goes into playing but what's cool is that you can hit your overdub button and when you do it'll go into overdubbing and then you hit it again and it'll go back so you can pop in and out of of overdub to you know record more uh, overdubbing on that one loop so this is just one sample it's a looper and when all is said and done and you stop it it's going to ask you if you want to keep it or not. And you get to name it, and you get to assign it to a pad if you want, or not. Okay, So it's just a mono 
uh, WAV file is what this does. And you can overdub the shit out of it, and you can only go a minute if you put the bars to off. And the trigger just means that that's the level. So 10 to, let's see what it goes up to, maybe 100. Yeah, 99. So 99 would obviously be you have to really hit it hard to get it to trigger. Um, so I figure 10 is pretty good where, you know, it's not going to trigger too easy, but it's going to trigger easy enough. Um, so what's cool about this is that you can do a live performance. And so let me, uh, let me see what I can do here for you. Um, so we don't want an audio track here. All right, so let's say that we go into, okay, we got that. So let's go back into the old looper, the scooper looper. Okay. Now, I can go back into overdub. Okay, this is, this is not to a click. Okay, this is to, this is just live recording. It's not going to quantize it or anything. This is like a looper. So if we go to a little bit of a back into overdub so it's a looping recorder and so that's looping uh, recording from the pads you can also uh, loop record from the input so if you plug a guitar or something like that in there you can do the exact same thing with a, a guitar riff I'm holding the camera with one hand so obviously I'm not going to play any guitar but that's the idea on this thing. And then um, this level, pan, and all that is after, meaning that's not going in, that's coming out. Okay, so regarding the sequence button, whether it's on or off, what that does is it won't record a sequence, but it'll play it in the background for you to jam along with. So if the sequence is off and you hit, let me just, you get the click, but you don't get, if you have a sequence in the back, you know, on tracks one or two or three or whatever, it won't play them. But if you do, if you put the sequence on and you have a little deal there, and you go, okay, now whatever I'm playing, guitar or whatever, I can play along with the drum beat. So it'd be like a, it'd be like a guide track or something if you put the sequence on. And then you can choose your sequence, sequence one, and you can choose your program as well, which is cool. And you can choose the level of it to mix in with your track. So let's just experiment with that a little bit. Yeah. So you've got a level, like a little mixer guy. And if I do that, yep, 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 yep. Okay, so I have more than one track now. It says sequence one, track two, drum. So if we do this... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. So it'll play your whole sequence in the background um, that you can jam along with if you have your sequence button on. If you have it off, you get nothing. You just can jam along with a click. That's it. That's all you get is a click, which is fine. So you can have a click or you can jam along to the sequence. It won't record your sequence, though. That you can do on the last video I made, the audio track. You can do that there. But this is just a, it's a looping recorder, man, and it's cool. And so if you if you go to um, here and you say overdub instead of play, and you hit uh, this, it's going to go right after the two bars. It's going to go into overdubbing because it's, so you can still, you know, do your thing. Until you either stop it there, you can go back and forth. All right, so if you want to, to um, here's another thing about it. So let's say you stopped the thing and, oh, man, I want to put another 
overdub or two on it, you hit play first, and then you hit your overdub, then you hit your overdub button, and boom. If you hit your overdub first, it's going to, and you start recording, you've just now erased the last thing without saving it. To save it, you have to hit your keep button, and you got to go in there and name it and tell it, you know, to either put it to a pad or not. It's very simple. This is a very simple little little deal here. So you've got your uh, from record into overdubbing or from record into play. And then you've got your trigger uh, level. And then you have how many bars, uh, uh, 1 to 16 or off, which is just a minute maximum of recording. And then in your setup, you have analog or digital inputs. That's all you get, one or the other. And then you have only mono. So it goes mono left and right, mono right and mono left. And you can monitor it or not. And then it just tells you how, a free space. And you can use your foot switch to do, um, which is rad. So you can use your foot switch to do play, stop, overdub. So foot, one, foot switch one, you can click your overdubs in and out um, with your foot switch, which is completely cool. You want to record, play, stop, record, play, overdub, and play. So it's a looping recorder, and it's badass. Um, you know, it's something Akai's system just does not have. Um, and, it, and as I say, the source is either on your inputs in the rear, or the pads. That's it. That's all it records. It won't record your your um, your sequences, but you can jam along to the sequences by playing in the in the background. And you can plug whatever, and then it won't do that if you hit this. Yeah. So there you go, man. That's the looping recorder. Pretty cool stuff. All right.